everybody and welcome to episode 101 is it 101 we're going to find out this week this is the one where gary did lakeland hundred run to the hills podcast sponsored by cheer charge cheer charge have been fueling adventures especially gary's with real food made with real ingredients since 2012 go and check them out at www.cheercharge.co.uk there's only one name on everyone's lips this week it's gary gary it's gary <laughs> i'm gonna ask him oh he's really nervous he's swimming from side to side he's got a light sweaty sheen yeah. Yeah, the questions light up i did listeners dear listeners i will tell you i had i did prepare him the questions and allow him to look at them i don't think he's looked at them i appreciate but... that facebook post because then it was like oh yeah i do have a bit of time to prep <laughs> <laughs> we're going to try and make our way through the delicious amount of questions that we've got. I've got some questions for myself. We haven't talked, caveat, we do not, I do not know any details of the race at all. I am all, I cannot wait to hear everything uh, about how it went down, man. But first, well, firstly, well done. Well done for finishing. How, how are you feeling? How's the, this is a week later, so we're recording this on Friday. So it's pretty much, yeah, it's a week later. Thank yeah. You. I think okay. I'm super, you know, like all these things, it takes a little while to recover the uh, sleep. And I stayed in the youth hostel in Ambleside and Coniston after that. So the sleep hasn't been great. So it's not the best recovery, but yeah, I feel okay. I've got a few aches and pains, which maybe we'll chat about later why things didn't go <laughs> as, as hoped. But yeah, other than that, yeah, no doms, anything, all that's gone. I'll be walking anyone who's following me on Strava. See, I've been out and about walking with the family in the lake so yeah feel feel fine it's funny you said about fueling adventures um so i did use cheer charge as one of my uh pieces of nutrition and dougie zinnis former guest of the show he called me out he, he did say i think i was in um dale main he's like, i hope you're I hope you're using cheer charge <laughs> did you, you were very close to dougie for a long time on the That's track awesome yeah, yeah that was really good we um i suppose people might have thought i was trying to race him and that was never my strategy but being with somebody does definitely you're a bit more mindful i suppose and you do speed up which was good when sometimes it's quite easy just to do the ultra shuffle um so yeah dougie and i wow i think i saw dougie at a dock ray and then I think we probably stayed all the way to Mardale. Yo yo didn't that with checkpoints. In a nutshell, he was, I was much quicker in the checkpoints. And then he'd catch me some point, of, <laughs> some point during the actual run itself. Um, but yeah, wow. So all the dock way to Mardale, that's quite a few miles. But really impressive watching Dougie, mainly from behind. Uh, he did this amazing walk run strategy where he just like in, in the spurs walking with running, but he was such a strong hiker. It was amazing. And watch him go up Fusedale. As I was in a pit of pain, <laughs> it was it was impressive and demoralising in equal measures. Oh, he's a class runner. He's a class runner. You're a class runner too. It was great to see you going together. So, what should we do? Should we start from the top and work our way through this uh, epic? Well, of, should we start with the results of? Uh, yeah, we'll do. We'll do a normal show. Um, I suppose my week in the lakes has just been a bit. Yeah, really. I, I've had a. Oh wow! If there's any way you're going to go and recover and indulge yourself cakes and sandwiches and cooked breakfasts and lots of uh walks with the family did you stay, did you stay in the youth hospital youth yeah hospital. both you we um how we, is that with the family did you have your oh, own my daughter, yeah my son's fine my daughter's pu is pushing it there with my daughter uh to be fair should have booked a, an ensuite room not really fair on is me should have done that give a bit more privacy <clears throat> um but yeah it seemed fine with it we you know we, we enjoy playing cards games and stuff like that so in the evening we quite happy occupy ourselves like that um yeah and ambleside youth hostels like kind of uh bordering on a hotel i suppose as far as youth hostels are concerned really nice in the evening on down by the lakeside uh it's, yeah a wonderful time in keswick and uh, sorry ambleside and coniston just you know, driving home yesterday, and I was just feeling a bit down the dumps. You can oh, drive away. Rubbish. Is there anything more rubbish than driving home from a holiday? No. no. But what about you, me? You know, we'll, we'll chat about my race and stuff. How's your week been? Um, it's it's been quite busy, Gary. Yeah, it's been super busy. I hadn't sort of planned it, but it's sort of turning into a bit of a recovery week because I have not juggled life very well. 
I just haven't managed. Normally, I'm, you know, the queen of multitasking and managing everything. And this week just seems to be everything seems to be spanners and works. But that's okay because I've done a few weeks of loads. Of, I was look back. I was like, when did I last have a rest day? Can't if I can't remember when I last had a rest day. I'm like, ooh, you were rest day. I'd have had a rest day and um, and just been so just not had any help with the kids and just been super busy. So that's fine. It's been quite quiet on the old training front. Been out running most days, but nothing mega. Did uh, I had a lovely run um, with some new friends that were, had come over to Morsian, um for a holiday, and we did a lovely. I love going with people like because we get a bit. I'm a bit. <sighs> You know about the view, Mont Blanc here. That was, uh, and I love running when people are like, "This is amazing." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, it's all right." Uh, and they're like, "Can we stop and take a picture?" Do you want to really? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it's definitely running with people that opens your eyes a bit. But we're still in the midst of really hot weather. It's our local trail race this weekend, which sadly I'm not doing, which I love. Um, and they put a notice out saying you're going to be limited water at checkpoints. You're only going to allow to take so much. Because they can't, they haven't got it. Just haven't yeah. got it. No streams. They've had to turn the troughs off. Um, and There's so a fear, you know, isn't it? The front runners take it all too, so they do have to rush. Yeah, so you're going to have to, um, I think you have to start with three litres or something to carry that's, you through. That's, that's a lot so of water. Much, isn't it? <laughs> Although your capacity to carry three litres. Um, and and it, the checkpoints are quite far apart on this race. Anyway, they're a couple of hours apart. Um, so when it's hot and you're climbing, yeah. that's quite a long. I mean, a couple of hours for people at the front end of the field. So the back end of the field, it's going to be... Is there water along the way they can pick up? No, water? but that's the thing. Normally there's streams and troughs and stuff, but there's no, the, the river's dry. Oh and they've turned a lot of the troughs off. So it's going to be hot. So I had a few, got a few mates doing it. And I'm like, take bottles up the day before. Yeah. And I, oh, I mean, it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, because it does say, it does say you can have, you know, it's not that strict. We get quite strict rules on checkpoints and stuff. They don't really have that so much in France. Yeah. Um, sort of free for all. <laughs> Very French. Oh, well, that would be a day and effort to Lake Nundred. If you yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just, there's just, any race I've ever done, there's never been any rules on like crewing or, you know, everything is pretty much like, yeah, you need some cheese, you take cheese. Yes, he run with you and give you cheese. That's fine. Um, so it does say you fam you know, your crew can meet you anywhere with water. So, cool. but I mean, whether your crew can get anywhere because it's pretty mountainous, there's only yeah. a few minutes of access in the car. Anyway, yeah, so it's been really hot, still really hot. But uh, so I'm going to have a quiet week this week and that's all fine. I think the body's kind of ready for that. And then a couple of more weeks of August and then it will be proper September, head down spine i think i've made the decision i'm going to come over for five days and do the course not do a hundred mile race before it i think that's a better move i think so yeah a move because i'm having my main anxiety about the spine is actually not the physical part of it because that is what it is isn't it um it's the being somewhere really exposed at three o'clock in the morning and falling to my death <laughs> And being on the front page of the Daily Mail, Mama Free puts herself in peril. What was she and thinking? What was she, th what was she doing out of the kitchen? Yeah. So uh, I think I can, so I'm like, what am I most anxious about? Actually, the thing I'm most anxious about is falling to my peril on where I don't know where I am. So I think I'm going to do that and come over and Bryn will just have to suck it up and we'll somehow manage. This is it though, isn't it? Like as a woman now, I'm like, well, I have to organise in order for me to go away for a week, the actual logistics of that is enormous. Yeah, we could all step up, men. <laughs> all the kids, all the kids, all their activities, mm. organising everything, and then the guilt of leaving them, and the kids would be like, <gasps> anyway, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Gary, because otherwise I'll be annoyed to myself. I don't know. Anyway, my week has been dull. There's nothing other people have done exciting. Well, I think that's a great idea. Be a bit Thanks. more Thanks, diligent buddy. on the course than to bit, do a race. Bit of diligent. Now I just need to plan how I'm actually going to do that and which bits I'm going to run. So I might put a Facebook post out of spine runners. Which bits do you wish you had recced and do you want to run them with me? <laughs> <Show> me. <laughs> oh, surely we can um, share some miles, Eddie. That'd be great. 
Imagine, imagine the joy, especially if you're still a little bit tired from late London. I tell you what, my ankle, my Achilles is so much better, but it's so bad on um, really rocky terrain. It's still so wobbly Ooh. and it's the right one. So we were traversing around the mountain. If it's on the outside of the mountain, like on a single track pass, it's awful. It's like wobbling. I feel like I'm going to fall over on it. But if we're going around the other way around the mountain, then it's okay. So as long as we're going in that, what is it, clockwise direction, yeah. I'm absolutely fine. As soon as we go anti-clockwise, it just it literally feels like it's not going to work. Anyway, that's rehab in process. Um, right, before we get on to you, let's talk about Lakeland 100, some, some results. There were some fiery times from some friends. Amazing. Yeah, Ali Bailey. Um, well, Greg, you read quite a few friends out on the course. Um, but it was great to see Ali Bailey. And I helped very briefly on Ali's Bob. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I I feel that I yes, that was all just good to me. <laughs> and I know he's been training hard. Um he's not shared any miles with me this year. <laughs> out on the you know what's up to you. That's a true sign. <laughs> But it was awesome. Um, you know, he, he saw Modest Ali uh, and just to see him go out there. And I've seen photographs of angles. He had a, I think he said he had a tumble going into Braithwaite, maybe two tumbles. And his left uh, leg, lower leg, was pretty swollen up at the end of the race. So, my goodness me, from Braithwaite all the way to the finish, I think about an hour, about an hour gap on the guy uh, behind him in second place. So yeah, Ali took the win in twenty one out twenty hours and forty six minutes. Curiously, you know my aspirations for a V fifty win. Well, the guy in second place was a V fifty, and it was like twenty one something. So okay, well we know what you need to do. We know what we need. You need to do. Oh yeah, last year on Ali, and <laughs> that's what I need to do. Need and to Emma Stewart that. took the win, and um, yeah, twenty three hours and five minutes. And Paul Wilson, what a tip! My goodness me, and uh, she continues to have a great year. I did uh, call her on the start line, and <laughs> well, because I had messenger about coming on the show, <laughs> so I was working all the time. <laughs> Not on the start line, you did. Um... Oh goodness me, it was like very brief. I wasn't like really bothering it. <laughs> bothering I wish to look. Bothering over the spreadsheet. Oh, yes. it's just, um, <laughs> just look, like, let's lock you in now. You're here. Uh... But she had a great race, um, and it sounds like again she struggled for quite a while. I think. Um, I'm not too sure if she's physically vomiting or just feeling terrible, but yeah, it didn't go all to plan. But then she she rallied. I think uh, puke and rally is the phrase, Eddie. <laughs> one of my faves, one of my faves. And then in the 50, well, you talk about this because you probably saw these guys. One of my many goals that got burned <laughs> during the race was not to see any 50 runners. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Andre uh, Sigurds. Uh, basically, I was in the table three checkpoints, and he zoomed in and out, chucked his pound in the in the pot, <clears throat> um, and then off he went up the up Jacob's ladder. And yeah, he took the win in seven hours, fifty six minutes. And then Katie Carr, Sebastian, friend of the show, crushed it too. And it was great actually, because you've you've got your name on your on the on your backpack, so there's a lot of kind of communication between each other. And people uh, know who you are, which is nice. And yeah, Katie did really really well. Uh, I was in two minutes, and again saw her at some point on that last section between Tumblethwaite and Coniston, which was. Were you goodness. sort of did it, were you sort of corpus mentis? Did you know what she was like when she came past you? Were you like hi, Katie, or were you like head down? I am. In no, no, I, I, that is not me as a runner. I'm not that. You don't I go mean, that deep. I don't go fully in, in the zone. I do remember having a brief chat with Katie, but my she was in the zone. She was chasing. Um, she was chasing her own course record, which she broke. Yeah, but, yeah. fourteen seconds or something, wasn't it? It was. Uh, <laughs> It was super tight. So, yeah, she was uh, had a very brief chat and then she was off into the mist and the rain. Um, so she did awesome. Well done, everybody. Just a, just an awesome race, great race. And to see these people, like the 50 runners, oh, my God. Like, I could not move up those steps. And just to watch uh, Andre just jog up them. Oh, you must have been looking at such envy <laughs> with them. Yeah, it's huge well done to anybody that took on either of those courses, especially if it was perhaps your first foray into a 100 or a 50. Uh, I think so a lot. I, I missed it. I, I seem to have this, I don't have this experience of the rain, although Lisa tells me we, we were getting drenched in Ambleside, but it seems like, um, yeah, a lot of people got really, really wet over the course.
Right, we're going to do things a little different today because I want maximum time to quiz Gary. So we're going to do our competition results a bit later than scheduled because we're recording this a bit later, where we asked you on Facebook to post a picture of you in the heat wave, running in the heat wave, post running in the heat wave. And I very kindly shared a pretty, I mean, that could be the front page of Vogue picture of me in a attractive sports bra, sweat everywhere. Um, I mean, what a hottie, what a, I'm surprised Runderwear didn't pick that up. Hard work right there. I don't even think it was hard work. I think it was just half an hour run, but it was so hot. And I sweat as soon as I step out the door, whatever the temperature. <laughs> Um, anyway, Gary, Gary had the Gary chose the winner this week. Who is it, Gary? Yeah, Chantel Clark. Uh, you know, if someone takes a picture of a dog, awesome. And uh, her and her dog taking a dip in the lock. I just love that picture. I love, you know, I love Miles with Rex, and he loves a bit of water, so I can oh. both of you cooling down there. It was awesome. So well done, Chantel. A box of Chia Charge goodies will be winging their way to you. If we haven't got in touch, then yes, yeah, send Eddie or I a DM. And we'll uh, just to give us a nudge, <laughs> we'll pass that on to Tim over to your choice. But yeah, well done. Thanks for entering, everybody. It was great seeing all the pictures. I loved it. We love a picture one. We just put that every week. Just send us pictures. <laughs> Right, this week's interview is all about Gary. Everyone has been waiting to hear all about the race, me included. Firstly, well, well done. So proud. Loved tracking you. Thanks, Eddie. A well executed, even though perhaps we well, we've gone into it yet, perhaps it wasn't what you planned, but the way that you executed it and carried on still did a really cracking time. Um, so a huge well done for that. And also alongside the race performance, I just loved seeing pictures of you. <laughs> on social media and everybody cheering you on people messaging people messaging me debbie martin Gansani, the celebrity herself found you on the course took a picture and said you were seen stuffing your face with two pieces of some sort of lemon cake or something the whole community was out there <laughs> cheering you on did you feel that how did that how did that feel oh wow is from the st the start to the finish uh it was it was awesome just Say you know, meeting people who listen to the show and then take the time to come over <clears throat> and say hello was absolutely awesome. Were you I, really awkward and embarrassed like normal, or were you quite like, oh, yeah? <laughs> I hope I was okay. <laughs> it was, you know, it, it, goodness me, it was, it was just brilliant. I remember being with Joy, my son George, and he was like, Dad, everybody knows you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, that's one of my questions a bit later on. Were the fam like, this is awesome, or were they a bit like, oh, Dad? Uh, well, they, I think George loved it, but it, it really did slow down the day because then we go, okay, right, we're just going to go back to the hostel, and then you'd bump into somebody who listens to the show. So, you know, you maybe spend a few minutes chatting with them, and I just look in the distance, at least, and the kids were <laughs> like a few hundred meters away. But can't complain you know you people take us out on the runs with them you know eddie and uh list, spend a lot of time listening to us and it was just awesome i really really did love it from the guy at registration did me uh pre-kit check listens listen to the show it was just Billy, even Billy Burns, was it? He's yeah like, and, and i bumped into james uh mocroft lecky guy um and he said, basically, people had been watching the podcast and were like, oh, you're, you're the guy of the podcast. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing how many people um, listened to us. And, uh, yeah, but being in, being in around, when we're in Ambleside, it was a, a lot different. But being around Coniston was pretty awesome. Just Maybe really we need good. to, it needs to be Run to the Hills, Lakeland 1500, and not Montaigne. <laughs> <laughs> It was good. Yeah, I really, I really did enjoy. It. Really enjoyed putting a. I'm terrible with the names and faces, but just being able to have a chat with people who yeah. you know you, you've seen uh, commenting on the Facebook group, and you, you've had a bit of a connection with them. Like Angela Green, my goodness, her spreadsheet is super famous. <laughs> yeah, just awesome. I really did love it. That meeting our community it was a real a treat. Feeling the love, feeling the support. I did, yeah. Oh, really. that's amazing. That's so lovely to hear. And thanks everyone for sharing the photos. I loved it. I loved seeing you and your awkward smile and all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it was 
great. Uh, right, some, we're going to start with some like sensible questions and work oh, through right. the things, and then we'll start with the and we'll go with you know, that banter. I kind of like. I hope everybody. I kind of sometimes I've merged questions. Sometimes I've added my own questions. So go with it. Let's go with the flow. Uh, okay. Let's start off with Martin Webb and Ashok Guram asked the same sort of question that yeah. you had a twenty four hour ambition, which we talked about. When did the goal shift from that? Um, and what did you sort? Did you sort of we, did you acknowledge that that wasn't going to happen? Um, and yeah. that a sort, sort of race went on, or how did that sort of how did that occur? Well, well, once you you know, I have to say, I I, I used um, for the first checkpoint, I referred to Angela's uh, spreadsheet. I think it was an hour twenty minutes for that split, and I've actually gone through. I've looked at all my splits, and they all hovered around between ten and fifteen minutes. Um, where I was and where I should be. So I was quite happy with the effort. Um, and then when I got all the way, my goodness me, I got all the way to um, Howtown. And I think I should have been at Howtown at, oh, let me say, Target, half past eight. And I was actually there at 20 to nine. So it was only 10, for 60 odd miles, I was 10 minutes adrift on that schedule. Yeah. But what was wicked at Howtown was um, my average pace was at 13.22 when it should be about 30 minutes and 40, whatever, four to be. So I was up. I was like 20 seconds up, <clears throat> which for the last then 40 miles was was a real good place to be. So I was really wet. I, I, I consciously, I knew the first few miles, maybe 20 miles, was, the effort would have been increased because you just testosterone full of everybody's around. And you're like, you had to put a good show in out of Coniston. Yeah. <laughs> well, once you say to someone you're doing 24 hours, you can't just then just have a little shuffle. But it was great. So, um, and then Shane Nesbitt, the guy with the quads, he'd been on the show. Uh, he, he just snuck under just a few seconds under 24 hours. But we all came in at checkpoint one together. So on reflection, I think, yes, that was appropriate um pace and then i'm mindfully you die on the heart rate how did that work out heart rate was initially quite high but then yeah. i really after maybe um boots possibly butter me i can't remember exactly but i consciously eased off and you can see the heart rate does slowly decline but the f the sorry the speed was still there i was i was i was moving really well and i got all like you see i got all the way to um how town and i was 20 seconds up on average pace per mile which meant then the second half could be quite a lot slower per mile technically because i banked all that time and i was aware that you know i wasn't it's not banking time like when you know people see a banking time you just think oh god me that's a recipe for disaster seeing a yeah. road marathon but on the trail race say going to black sail pass you you know you're going to lose a minute that 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 could end up being a 20 minute mile over it. so you it's really d different how you uh you have to have some time in the bank to compensate for when you're going to have such an epic uh slow mile so i was really happy you know the heart rate was quite low it was in like the 115s 120s i caught a bunch of people who i never thought i'd see you know they said dougie's in us um and i felt i felt amazing all the way <laughs> all i did have a few twinges that, that's to see i felt amazing i had a few twinges in my groin area which um but there was nothing that happened this is really strange that nothing significant happened i didn't have a, tw a fall or anything where i thought oh that's not great i can really feel my calf is aching now but then yeah le left how town it's quite a bizarre, actually. I've left how I'm feeling amazing, then started the climb up to Fusedale and just had nothing in my right upper thigh groin. Um, and that was basically um, the tail of that final half of the race. Anything where I had to apply Pressure. force. Yeah, force through my right leg, and even then going down um where you had to say leave with your right leg honestly if i never had the poles that i i, I it could have been a dnf i really don't know the the poor the poles were doing jobs they weren't supposed to be doing, be doing really. i wasn't moving well and it was quite frustrating because there's some sections where you can run mm. and i looked at those mile splits when i was kind of mindful to look at them and they were like quite regular if it was a good runnable mile it was under these 13 minutes so I, I i had the ability to move my gait when i didn't have to really apply any force or, or braking and so and i just couldn't i watched dougie just shoot off into the distance a few <laughs> but then I saw him at Mardale. It was really weird because I thought, well, that's the last I'll see a Dougie. Yeah. But then I saw him at Mardale, but then he went up uh, Gates Garth Path and uh, that passed. And that was that was the last time I saw Dougie. And that was just 
you know, that was the tale of the second half, really. So going back to the uh, question. I imagine you did what you did then. You were just like, well, I've got to manage this. Probably your your mental focus shifted from that time to like, actually, I've just got to manage this yeah. pain slightly. And that's what I'm going to focus on because the last thing you wanted to be was to end up lying in a checkpoint, <laughs> having your groin massaged. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that would have helped. You know, this, this is what I'm a bit silly because I was literally in and out of the checkpoint super quick. Um, but yeah, I didn't really mindfully like readdress the goal. I just moved forward. I was quite conscious, you know, if I felt myself walking, maybe when I should have been running at this, I had this little, it wasn't not really a mantra, but I just go one, two, three, go. <laughs> and then I'd start. Very good. That's really good because that's sometimes the hardest bit in a hundred mile plus race is to switch when you've hiked for a long time uphill and you can see a bit and you're like, I should run this. I know I can run this. So that's what you did because I always looking for tips for those bits when you're like, go on, go on, go on, lean forward into the run. So you went one, two, three, go. Because I always count to 50. I'm like, start the count to 50, start running. And if you get to 50 and you need to walk again, you can. And then just focus on that one, two, three. And then once you're at 50, you're running. You know, so yeah. Well, it was good again watching Dougie. I was very mindful just to, okay, let's try and have a little, uh, just a shuffle for, the, for, for this bit. Yeah. And so if I got there and, um, I don't know, I just wasn't fit enough for the challenge. Uh, well, ultimately, I wasn't. My body wasn't fit enough. Something happened along the way and the upper right hand groin wasn't conditioned enough to take the challenge. So, yeah, a different yeah, yeah, part, yeah. part of the system wasn't uh, prepped for, for, for the job. But um, I wasn't, yeah, I definitely think I was fit enough. And we'll probably talk about it later. I definitely think I've got the 24-hour Lakeland 100 in me. Um, but, yeah, I think it was just that, up, that upper grind. How is it now? Does oh, it you're definitely still aware of it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the things like <laughs> just getting ready this morning, I have to lift my uh, right leg. No, 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 no more details about your okay. <laughs> There's no strength in that right leg at the moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it might be a nerve thing as well, you know. You don't know that it's not something uh, nerve-related. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. I did, you know, I did all the strength conditioning, maybe not the correct strength uh, conditioning. I did all the miles. Yeah. It happens. Hey. And it, bloody hell, it's, you, you talk to every other person had some drama. So it's, uh, it, yeah. That, that, and this is the, the cruelty of the 100 mile of that. I could have the run of my life, say, next year if I'm looking up to get to the ballot, but the weather is absolutely horrendous. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's awesome, but that's why we love it. That's why we love throw it. Throw the dice, throw the dice. Right. Elizabeth Hilton wants to know how your nutrition worked out from what we've seen on the course and the many comments we've got about various you stuffing stuff in your face. <laughs> how did your nutrition, how did the plan go? What changed? What worked? Nothing. Everything. Uh, everything was fine with the nutrition. Um, I probably would change something in the future. I'm not too sure. The food at the checkpoints was awesome. I can't argue with that. But uh, sometimes I just <laughs> sometimes it's hard to eat a ham sandwich <laughs> when you just can't you just can't get it down. And um, so maybe I would carry more of my own nutrition if if, okay. if I get through the ballot next time. But yeah, yeah everything. Um, There's only one time I had some food kind of intolerance where I had a moment of trying to be sick because I just couldn't eat properly. Um, but no, no. Every half an hour, I took I had my active route. And <laughs> but what was a bit. Um, food top of food repetition so i'd end up having ginger loaf and then washing it down with active <laughs> root ginger ginger drink it was like oh my god how much ginger can somebody <laughs> can somebody take but the combination of not as much mint cakes that was good so i did have mint cake with me but not just trying to ram so much in i extended the um normally it'd be 20 minutes i read really, but i'd extend that to half an hour because then i was getting I'm calories not. from the drink but okay. it Oh, yeah, yeah, because because why you, yeah you extended the precision it. hydration gels awesome oh my goodness me they i had some of those and i had some caffeine high five gels and the high five gels would kind of burn my throat after a while of eating that kind of food but never had any of that the precision hydration stuff so yeah i'll be definitely putting an order in for those again and the big 90 gram um pouches they are awesome the cheat charge flapjacks yeah so all of that uh, no issues with, that's with, such with a good because that's such an improvement from the bob graham 
It's a huge improvement. Uh, okay, Ashley Holbrook and Dave Aliano want to know. We all <laughs> want to know your kit and your shoe choices. Dave's really wants to know which shoes you work wore, and uh, Ashley wants to know what worked, what didn't, and uh, is there anything you change about your kit? Um, no, yeah, did replace and I went for comfort. I went for uh, I went for my Scott Kinabalu twos. Um, and you know, I am a bit of a Scott fan, but I do have lots and lots of other shoes that I could lean on. It doesn't always have to be Scott. Um, and they, yeah, I have to say, but I think everybody struggled later on with all the pure amount of water on the course over the rocks around the kind of Langdale area in that last section. So everybody was slipping and sliding there, but yeah, no, no feet issues. So that was awesome. No, feet, no trench foot, no blister. Oh, yeah, every, everyone's feet were um, a bit kind of grotty at the end of it but no no blisters nothing nothing like that which was bothering me um i've got a bit of a bruised toenail but i had a bruise that same bruised toenail after St. Cuthbert's way so i've just kind of aggravated that that was fine so yeah i was still on the start line i was checking people's shoes out and i saw some of the the ultra track rcs which i wanted to wear and i saw a few runners with those on so i was like oh, maybe i should have done that but no no <laughs> just swap them, yeah. But uh, no, no, the ultra ones they're just that little bit heavier, too. Oh, I don't think I'd ever wear those again. Oh, no, no, these the ultra RC are uh, so the, the, the they're not they're light, they're like they're they're, they're quite light. Which one am I thinking then? There's another one that's a bit heavier, anyway. I think it's a super track RC, are the um, is it that? Are they a bit heavier? Are you happy? What about clothing wise, bag wise? Yeah, my the, again, the Scott. Oh, I did write it down actually. The RC uh, TR10 vest, which is super light. So I, I put all these things on the scales. Uh, you know, I love my Montaigne vest that I've got, but this Scott one is good. Cool. Your vest, your top that you're going to wear on the scales. Everything goes on the scales. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Honestly, what were you going to do if it was too heavy? Like trim the hem off or the zip? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've chopped a few bits off it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unnecessary items <laughs> but it's it's quite a small vest and i think someone at st cuthbert's way were like commented have you got all your kit in that pack nobody commented at the lake but I, I, with the vest and then i've got like these uh again scott shorts trail shorts and i've got loads of little pockets and stuff stuff in and i had my uh an ultimate direction belt for my poles and they've got again lots of pockets so i'd spread the lord of all the things i need yeah a few people have asked for like tips for um people that are gonna we'll talk a bit about training tips maybe in a bit but kit tips i would say like spreading the load around shorts belts oh yeah or being on your back and on your shoulders you can yeah. use especially like fuel you're going to eat in that bit in the next sort of 30 minutes yeah yeah and all that all the um so all my uh, active root pouches were in my shorts and I'd fold, <laughs> they were all there. I'd fold them over so they weren't, because when I went a few training runs, the the powder would like shake. So it would sound like you had a, you were running with like a salt shaker or something. It was quite off putting. So I had all them around there. Then the food was um, on in my uh, ultimate direction belt. And that worked. Yeah, it went really well. I didn't have to think about what was where. I knew that was fine. And uh, yeah, so kit wise, that my head torch was some uh, bio light head torch and that lasted all night. No issues with that whatsoever. Um, any other bits of kit, any of the poles? Uh, what yeah, about the like waterproof? Presumably you put jacket on at some point. I never put the jacket on, but I had it. Yeah. And this was awesome. The top I wore was a red light top. And I only wore that red light top because I'd lost my Scott <laughs> top. But one of the good things with the red light top, it's got three little pockets uh, around the the back, like a cycling jersey, I suppose. They have the things in the back. So I always do this. I did this in the Bob Greer run, actually. I just stuffed my waterproof jacket in that pocket. So it's super easy to get to should yeah, exactly. it start raining. Exactly. You, um, you don't have to think, oh, I can't bother to get it out. But yeah, you never put it, it on. It wasn't that wet. No, no, no. Like, um, I re you know, if it was the Tilbeth weird afterwards, maybe I could have put the waterproof jacket on them but i had only kind of three miles to go so i thought i'd just uh suck it up for it. Yeah. <laughs> well if somebody passed me and they had the jacket on, i think well there's a sign but um look everybody else would kind of still in it in still in still the so. i think you're still moving you're still grooving you're, oh, goodness you're... Me, i was moving so slow yeah that, that was... table weight climb though i mean that's quite gnarly <laughs> on a like just reasonably fresh legs if you've just run from ambleside <laughs> i can imagine coming up, up that it looks like a wall on the hundred it must be and also like you said the way you tackle it from the 50 to the 100 like the 50 yeah. run 
probably still able to um, slightly attack it. There's quite a few false summits on that section. Yeah. You go up the steps and then... You got, I scramble up these rocks and I was quest I've done it before and I'm thinking, is this right? This this didn't feel right. I shouldn't be yeah, here. Yeah, it suddenly takes you like over a waterfall. And you're like, what? what? Why am I trying? Oh, yeah, the top fall? of that waterfall. The, the poor <laughs> runners who got there at night when it was just noise and there was a lot, a lot of water already. My goodness me, that would have been super scary. Oh, my spine nightmares coming. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember seeing these 50 runners go past me and then and I was just in my head I'm like we're not going up there we're not we're, there's going to be a pass somewhere that's else what I always address. no that's not right no that can't no one would go. oh my god we are going up there well. and I could just see them going up and up and up I was thinking oh god and how was that last descent then into Coniston how were the legs on that because that's that's probably like the steepest bit too it's well, was, once once I got on the actual runnable non-technical section it was fine you know that, that was okay the quads were okay it was just that upper groin of that the first bit where you come off where you start to yeah, descend it's yeah it's relatively technical and it's yeah, really technical when you've run 103 <laughs> miles, isn't it? Probably but I would like literally just jam the pole there. in the ground. These big pool poles, they took a battery. And I would just pivot on that because if I had to go, honestly, if the right leg was just not was not taking any uh, pressure or any, couldn't take any weight. But yeah, just to run on it. So running down into Coniston, once you get on the kind of copper mine track, uh, that was fine. So yeah, I didn't didn't mind that whatsoever. I maybe could have, re- you know, if there was somebody breathing on my shoulder. It's really funny when you 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 you, you can hear noises. You, you think you can hear someone behind you quite often on an ultra run. I don't know if you're running scared or not, but I could looking over my shoulder and yeah, there's always someone behind you. There's always <laughs> someone behind you. I always thought if I've got a jacket on, that really exacerbates that too, because the jacket's making noises. Uh right, let's go back to more questions. Mark Snoot Holmes wants to know your best food choice. Well, we kind of ch- chatted about that maybe a bit. Any nice food choices at checkpoints? And Mark Johnston wants to know your fave checkpoint. Quite a few people, I think Katie Carr's Saberstein as well, wants to know your favorite checkpoint. And maybe oh, I, well. That. I did have a food, a horror story with food, and um, it was, <laughs> I'm reluctant to say it because somebody's obviously baked this this goods, and it really wasn't. Uh, it didn't go down. It didn't go down well. <laughs> it involves cheese and flapjack. That's um, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the person who's baked it is insane. <laughs> Tell me. Well, I was it was Braithwaite, and. Um, Apologies if I'm remembering this wrong. You know, sometimes you remember events and they maybe aren't actually true, but I'm pretty sure I asked somebody, what was that? And it was Cheesy Flapjack. And in my wisdom at that moment, I thought, that sounds okay. I'll take that. So then Braithwaite, I know it's crazy, isn't it, on on reflection. And then as Braithwaite all the way to the Blancastra Centre, and all I had was... um, this cheesy flapjack and my own nutrition but i didn't want to eat that because obviously i want to save it for <clears throat> later on in, in the run but yeah trying to get this cheesy flapjack down that's when i started to reach i couldn't i just every bite and then you're trying to swill it down with like a mouthful of active root it was pretty did you eat it all was it i did i, I ate the whole thing oh that's impressive sometimes i carry it for longer in my hand and in the end i just <laughs> it was it was like a little nibble and then a swill it was um but yeah, thanks for whoever like spent the time to bake all that stuff. But well, I shouldn't have picked that up. Favorite checkpoint? Oh, it has to be the Hardmore's one. I was flying then. I was really good spirits. Um, and to see those guys come out of the uh the darkness. You know, I said I saw John actually uh, on Friday night in in uh or Thursday, sorry, in Coniston. I said to him, I'll be dark when I get to you. And I walked away thinking oh, wow, that's like, <laughs> because that's Shirley and John, Shirley's like, oh, you might be like with the wind, with the leaders then. And then on reflection, it was maybe an ambitious target. It was uh, dawn, the sun was coming up, so it was still quite, it was still head torch time. But yeah, it was awesome being there. And that's where I saw Dougie, um, Zinnis, and they're all sitting down there. I think Dougie had a real bad night, actually, but he, he did puke and rally. My goodness me, he jumped out of that chair. 
And, Who uh, thought you? Oh, I'm not letting Gary from the podcast beat me. Uh, well, yeah, you did awesome. Um, but yeah, it has to be home was. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed that checkpoint. But you know, because I, a lot of the faces I recognise, so that was good. Um, good, 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 good to see see those guys. Good morale. Good morale. Uh, Kingsley Phillips, he's doing an uh, MSc um, on fatigue. Um, wants to know if it was your mind or your legs which drove the fatigue. Well, we sort of touched on the fact that the leg. <laughs> Pause the um pause the effort did the mind always stay strong yeah you know i did have a lot of negative self-talk i can't deny that which was um not Can good you share like what was going on in your head or is that private and it's fine to be private no no nothing deep i'm not a deep person it was just <laughs> You know, you. Sorry, what yeah. are you going to do it again? Um, you know, what, just why am I being so shit? <laughs> and because I never once thought, um, you know, I did think maybe I wouldn't get uh, twenty four hours, but I never once thought my time would be slower than the previous time. That never ever entered my head. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like a dumbass, I never thought that might happen. Did and how is that sitting with you? That it is is it an hour slower than when you did it last time? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, give or take a few minutes. Yeah, I think it was twenty five hours and something, so twenty six. Oh, I'm fine. Um, what can you do, Eddie? <laughs> Different quite... races, though. Every single time you do a race like that, the terrain, the weather, you'll just generally the way that the race unfolds. It's very hard to compare a time. Yeah. Um, that it doesn't not maybe a pure reflection on your current ab- ability and your progress from when you last did it. And actually, maybe you did better than when you did it last in the fact that you had more, you were handling a lot more, you were handling being a celebrity um, and the pressure that came with that. But, well, you know, the way you handled the injury and the way you handled your fueling, et cetera, et cetera. I you- definitely, I remember being, I felt a lot better. I know I was moving slow. But compared to 2017, where the second half was just bad again, um, but I definitely was, I, I, it's hard to explain really, but yeah, I definitely felt I was more able this time round. I just had this <laughs> this uh, this leg issue. Was for, yeah, but the mind, the legs, again, I just have to, we, we talked, chatted about earlier, I mean, these like one, two, three, go. Um, you just, yeah, it's easy. Your mind tells you you want to go really, really slow, but sometimes, you know, you look at your watch, you think, well, my heart rate's, like literally not even at 100 beats a minute i know i can i know i can uh move faster and that was awesome when when i see so i was running with dougie for a bit i was quite happy i was chilling out um yeah you know you're tired you run for 50 miles everyone's tired but then someone goes past you and all of a sudden you can raise your heart rate by another kind of five ten beats a minute just um and i wasn't never chasing dougie but it was just a mindful thing that just to, yeah let's say we can speed let's up against let's join the dougie train what yeah. do you do when you hear that negative self-talk in your head do you how do you handle that i don't think i did i just kept i just embraced it for the- <laughs> yeah you, you just listen to it and let it flow and just be like, yeah you know it's never going to stop me it's never you yeah, know okay. a proper injury yeah th- this was a, a mobility issue which would slow me down it wasn't like uh an injury that would stop the race. Um, yeah, I was just down in the dumps, simple as that. Oh, yeah. no, I can't imagine Gary down in the dumps. <laughs> <laughs> it was really frustrating, you know, you're just trying to say, climb up the steps of Jacob's Ladder and you just, you've literally got one leg to, one it's leg and two four. Well, the last like four months join the club. Now you know yeah. what it's yeah. How, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, the old, how the old people feel, Gary. <laughs> Talking about mobility and movement, Anne Harrell said she's become a lecky. Well, not maybe just not lucky, a pole addict after listening to the show. I mean, I don't mean to blow our own trumpet, but that 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 lucky chat came at such the maybe a bit too late for everyone doing like Clint. Yeah. But uh, she said she was looking at everybody's polls. She was slightly obsessed with polls over the weekend. How were you pleased with the polls? Hundred percent technique there. How many people did have polls? Didn't have polls? Give me the poll chat. Oh wow, yeah, loads of polls. People had polls. Yeah. I actually got <laughs> well, because James from Lecky. I don't think he was too keen on my pull technique, <laughs> put it put it politely. But oh, I'm blanking on the guy's name. Um, on the way to Deal Main, I shared a few miles with a, another runner, and he commented. He said, "I'm making this look easy with my pulls." Did you say, "Let's just give James a quick call uh, for that"? <laughs> but they would—they just propel you forward. 
like I said, I'm not too sure if I would have finished. I would have finished, but it may have been 29 hours or something like that. Just having that little bit of security. Um, to if you're going over water, water feature, it's not a garden center, is it? But um, <laughs> if you're going over like at the cross across some water or going through a bog, you know, you just kind of test the, yeah. what, what your next yeah. step's gonna I mean, be. Now I've, now I've used them for so long, I'm like, I don't know how people like yeah. without. But they just weren't a bother. They, they, they literally, once they came out, I put them back again. Uh, I can't remember why. I think I was caught because early on it was quite busy <clears throat> and I, I nearly harpooned near once. So that wasn't great. So yeah, we, we kind of I put, I put them away a few times. Um, but once it spread out, they stayed out. And again, with the lecky system, they stayed uh, out the whole time. Did you, how yeah, was this? Didn't put them, uh, uh, maybe after about 20 miles, they stayed out all the time. But that that shark system where you clip in and out. You wore the gloves, did you? Yeah, yeah, the little the little yeah, kind of. Yeah, I never um, wear those, even though oh, we do. Yeah, yeah, those on. They were awesome because it, see where they were really good. See if you're running through um, the ferns, I would just let them drag and just kind of breeze over the ferns, so they were, I wasn't tripping over them. That was good. Yeah, uh, 100% pole converts, and I. I don't say it lightly. Yeah, I definitely think they helped me finish in the time that I did. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, okay, some funny questions coming up now. Uh, Jonathan Jameson, he he's he multiple questions. He wants to know: Did you eat the three ham sandwiches from Doc Ray Checkpoint? And how many selfies were you asked for? <laughs> only you, Jonathan. Only <laughs> only Jonathan with it. Well, actually, on course. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was only Jonathan. They was the hardmost checkpoint. And that's right, you know, it, it was just such a lovely place to be because I knew Jonathan was going to be there. And I told him, don't let me sit down. <laughs> don't, don't let me sit down. I think I ate two of the sandwiches. Uh, I'm not too sure what I did with the third. I uh, probably left it in, in, in your pack. Me. He's in your short somewhere. <laughs> oh, there was some grim food that came out of that pack. <laughs> uh, Joanna Haslett wants to know what tune was playing at Kentmere when you went through. I have racked my brain, Joanna. Joanne. I can't remember. Sorry. That's a lot to ask, isn't it? And Kemp is quite like in the middle of that. You're sort of really in the middle of oh, the... <laughs> I can imagine if you can even know. Well, you know, it's, I remember Kemp May was quite a memory for me because I they, uh, Scotties were there. So I was a bit like, oh, wow, I recognise these uh, celebrities. And then... Um, the same. That's scary. <laughs> That's scary. <great. laughs> I didn't see it. Um, but when I came into Kemi, so I think I'd gone past, um, oh no, that was when uh, a runner that I'd maybe last seen at uh, possibly Dale Main, he came in and it was quite unexpected. So I was a bit like, oh, God damn it. But I oh, recognized okay. from the old county top. So it wasn't like, it was quite nice that, oh, I reckon. And he did pick my cup. I dropped my cup and he picked my cup up for me. So thank you very much. So that was very nice of him. But uh, no, unfortunately, no, I don't remember this song from Kemi. Maybe it was a special one for you and you didn't even notice. You oh, just... wow, terrible. <laughs> Adam Perth wants to know about songs too. He says, is, this a, is there a story behind this question? That he wants. To oh, yeah, she had some miles. Um, with the technical descent. With Adam. And I, I think we were just chatting away and I was, I'm not really great on the technical descents. And um, I think a coach of, of his had said, oh, think of a song, you know, when you're going down these, these technical descents, it helps with the descent. I believe I can fly. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I was really struggling because that's be quite appropriate. The only one I could um, really, are oh, you probably you're not even going to know this song. It's uh, uh, Stone Roses song. I'm the resurrection. I think if I was going to hum a song in my head, that's probably what it would be. Um, a tip. It's quite oh, a good, yeah, quite a good song. But that's it again. I'm such a basic. Run. I don't, I don't get too down. I don't do. I will take on the, the self pity and the self negative self talk, but it doesn't define the rest of the race. I probably wouldn't. Um, yeah, I didn't have music. Like you said, I didn't listen to anything when I was running podcasts or anything. So yeah, I probably wouldn't use a a song to help me get me down, get me down the hills. Unless it was terrifying on chains, sheer drop. But yeah, if it was, it would be Storm Roses song. I love Storm Roses. So. <laughs> Ali Bailey, how on earth did you manage to get up the old man after chomping four loaves of bread less than ninety minutes before the start? <sighs> well, I... What are you doing? Well, I had this, I don't know why, and I, I didn't know how long race brief was going to take, so I had these uh, cheese and pickle sandwiches on me, and um, the, the further the race brief went on, the more I ate, and I, yeah, I just polished, the, polished everything off. <laughs> and everyone was watching you going, oh, God, he really What is, is this guy doing? <laughs> what is this guy doing? <laughs> uh, Helen.
Simon Schofield wants to know, can you tell me the way into Boot? I wondered if there was another, is there another story behind this question? No, I think, she, no, I don't know. I think maybe no, she I mean, this is like This is like what the stuff I get from the kids when other parents go, oh, I heard what he did at school. I'm like, no, what did, oh my God, what did he do? There is, you know, it's funny, that section across, um, oh, wow, like as you're coming into Boot, it's a bit nondescript from a Lakeland 100 point of view. So yeah, you are, even Neil, who um, he's done it before, well, it was like, I just had no memory of this section. And there was a, it's funny, there was some guy, um, we just saw him coming back up the hill. So you'd obviously miss the little, you, the point you uh, take a little left-hand turn, go over, I think it's a stream, then over a sty. Um, he'd missed that anyway. And we saw him come up, coming back up the hill. He listens to the show. It was quite, it was quite good. He listens to the podcast. So that was nice. <laughs> so he shared a few miles, a few miles with him. Right. Last listener question. And then a few little sewing up ones from me tony allen what tasted sweeter the special lakeland lager or the medal around your neck yeah <laughs> we're talking about good timing you know i was like oh, at least i'm gonna go to the bar i'm gonna go to the bar and it was so busy i'm like oh. right at the end as soon as you finished did you no like, way no oh, okay. <laughs> this was on the, on the uh, presentation <laughs> okay and um <clears throat> it took me ages to think oh okay just gonna do just gonna go to the bar <laughs> and then Lo and behold, Tolly Allen was there um, at the bar. And I, I, he's a Sunderland stroller, so, you know, we kind of faces, uh, we recognise each other. And I, you know, said a lot, hi, Tony. And uh, he's like, what are you having? Have a, he bought me a beer. So that <gasps> did taste sweet. Oh, and I was but... about, I was so ready for a beer because, yeah, the, oh, after the race, goodness me, that would have been the last thing I wanted was a pint. Really? And... So when you finished, what did you do? What time of day did you finish? You were... Well, uh, so really eight o'clock-ish, okay. about eight o'clock. Going into the second night, what happened? Did you... We, 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 you just you managed to sleep then, or...? No, um, we, we hung around quite a bit. I was proper spaced out. Um, yeah. I, unbelievable. When I finished, uh, <clears throat> it was, I was... No tears on the course. I think somebody asked that, one of the questions. I, n there was no tears... Oh, yeah, did you have a cry? Sorry, I missed that one. I had a anyway. super big cry at the end, yeah. Ugly, ugly tears, I think. Um, oh, I love that. That's just amazing. <laughs> well, you see everybody, you know, you, you, it's quite a, a whirlwind of senses when you come through the, the, all the cowbells. There's a, 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 a wall of people. Then you, they kind of give you a medal and they get you off to this left-hand room. They take a photograph of you, get your T-shirt. You're like on this little conveyor belt. And then eventually you... You get to your family again, and that's uh, yeah, it was pretty overwhelming. That bit, what would have been nice if there was like a little chill out zone, you could have just took five gather minutes, yourself, the gather yourself zone, where you yeah, can... yeah, yeah, that would have been There's awesome. Some Kleenex tissues around, and <laughs> a deodorant, some wet yeah. wipes, clean yeah. yourself up, fresh it up, but um. Yeah, that was it was so overwhelming. It was so noisy because people were coming around the cowbells again. And it was just like woof, this is like it all it all it all comes out. Have a good cry. Um see so you're never gonna do it again. And then an hour later you're thinking, you know what, maybe <laughs> maybe I would do it again. Would you do it again? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Next year. I'll put my name. Yeah, it's it's not a given, is it? It's a ballot, so it's not a given. I'll put my name on the in the hat again. I think, yeah, I'd I just think, oh, <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm a bloody idiot, but I just, I'm sure I've got a 24-hour Lake 100 in me, and um, I need I'm to have a real... I'm sure you are. I just, I, I just need to have a real, how do I approach it? You know, the training, um, with this whole YouTube channel, those time on the fells when maybe I could have been more mindful about uh, getting myself stronger for Lake 100 instead of filming stuff. Lots of things like that I'm thinking about at the moment. Um, it's really good when you've done a big race not to to have a real period of reflection. You know, give yourself a good... And the period of reflection the week after is sometimes really different from the period of reflection than two weeks later. Like, just to sit with all the thinking, thinkings, thoughts, yeah. that come and go, and the highs and lows of the recovery. And, not, and I always say no, make no big decisions in that time when you're coming round from really going into the depths of your soul. Your soul, though, sounds a pretty... I mean, mine's pretty... Um, <sighs> Mine can be a pretty dark, not dark, but I can get really down and not, like I can be really harsh on myself sometimes when I'm not doing as well as I perceive I can do. But it sounds like you're still a good time guy to be with, even when I'm pretty simple. I'm a simple lad. <laughs> I think I remember my mom. She said to me uh, years ago that things just 
things some things do bother me that's not to say I'm like emotionless oh, but yes, um, I, know, I get that because sometimes you like you reflect and then you send me a little whatsapp going we didn't say thank you enough yeah <laughs> <To re-record. laughs> but I try and pick and choose where to use my energy I think that's I love fun. that what would you say your big, biggest learnings are from that every ultra race we learn something maybe about ourselves or our training or something well maybe that from a training point of view um I can't, I don't think the great Kipchoge you can't t- chase two chickens at once. Um, trying to rock up it. Where did that come from? You read that somewhere, <laughs> you just made that up. That is a legit quote from Kipchoge. <laughs> I love that. Okay, yeah, sorry, interesting. And I, I, I can't, I don't think I can be... Um, just spinning all these plates i can't I'd like say i've got london in october and yeah, yeah i'll do that and you know the, the valencia i know that was a long time ago now i just don't think i have the bandwidth physically and mentally to try and chase all the all of these things so maybe that's something i look for look into i really think that that is a part of the journey as well as like i'm going to do the same come september the kids go back to school and i've got three four months and it's I've got to devote myself, whole, everything else, and it's going to be a selfish endeavor, but it's only for that short period of time. But it's really important to, you've got to, if you want to do something, and it's going to take that, like you can do, you could do, go and do Lakeland again in about the same time. But if you want to get faster and take those few hours off, it's going to take quite a bit more. Do you know what I mean? It's not just a yeah. little, the odd little thing to it's that puzzle. It's a puzzle, isn't it? And it's that net, it's that step that you've got to do. And there's all the little things, and um, and it's a brave step to take as well because you go all in. And if you go all in yeah. and it doesn't work out, then you've got to cope with the fact that you went all in. But I always think if you've gone all in and it doesn't work out, you've still gone all in. The journey is, as we know from this podcast, the most fun part of the of the whole experience. Um, uh, so nothing now until. You'll have a good rest of August, kind of off, bit of Rexy time. Yeah, Rex and I, he's only going to be walking. Though. I'm not, I'm not, like, you know, if it wasn't for this groin thing, whatever it is, I could probably run now. Uh, just amazing man. But yeah, I've got no, no, no. Don't be a straw. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Two I'm days not... later, be like, legs feel fine. Legs feel fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, if the legs did feel legs fine, then um, I should have pushed a bit harder, shouldn't I? <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Um, going to rest i've got nothing you know you know i say i'm going to do london uh and that's because i've already entered it i've thought about not doing it actually just to declutter but then that's quite reactionary to something that's just yeah no big decisions no big decisions now are you last question for me and then i have got quick five for you because we always end all our interviews on the quick five um you pleased with that performance (sighs) yeah yeah I, it's it's a kind of a yes and no, you know. I did enjoy but one of the things we talked about was to enjoy it more, and I definitely even even though I was going slower, I definitely enjoyed the second half more than I did last time, which was one of the one of the goals. So yes, and I'm as always, you know, when it's not going well and you keep chipping away and you you, you do it. So I have to be in yeah, I have to be happy with that. Yeah, all, all of the goals I had for the day, <laughs> none of them happened. So from that, from that um, well, the angle, top goals you set, but the realignment of the goals during the race, they did. You did. You all your kit worked. Your nutrition worked. Your mental strategy worked. Everything worked. Just the time on the clock didn't say what you wanted it to say, yeah. but you managed it so well, and you managed it. So I kind of was like, don't let that time reflect. How no, it they can't, and that, that's the yeah. one, from the whole of the weekend, from not just me, but everybody involved, the event, you know, the, the, the event village, this, the atmosphere, that, because I didn't hit 24 hours, that can't define it. I've had such a wonderful time, you know, our community, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's been awesome, so... No, you know, I'm chatting away. I'm not I'm not too depressed about it all. <laughs> it would be, it's the other, I'm, I'm saying all this now because when you interview me about my next one, I go, oh, and then they say, oh, then it was terrible, and then it was terrible, and then it was terrible. <laughs> but it's funny, you know, maybe um, because I'm not that beat up about it mentally, uh, is that, uh, you know, was the why enough? Was it, it, all these questions I'll, I'll, I'll ask myself. Um, 
going 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 forward. Um, he's he's just this. It was just a pure arbitrary number, twenty four hours. They had no real. But next year, bizarrely, becomes potentially, if I get in, potentially a race. If I'm hoping for this V fifty, but my goodness me, whoever the guy, what I can't remember the guy's name. There's no chance I'm. If I'm struggling to get 24 hours, there's no way I'm going to turn that into a sub-22 hour. <laughs> never know. You never know. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Those lofty goals. Right. Quick five. Let's do this. Are you ready? I've never got to do the quick five before because you always take it from me and I have to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Number one. There's some, there's some questions that we ask that are just spun your way. Right. You're on a loop forever. You're on the Bob Graham round or the Lakeland 100 which one are you going to traverse forever? Oh, wow. That is a big, that's a tough question. I would say, oh, I'd say the late 100. <gasps> Reasons? It's just more um, sociable because I'm such a whore and I love our community. <laughs> it's great to see. It's great when what, you feel a bit shit. Out there for eternity cheering you <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, they all have to be there for My God, what's happened to Gary? Now <laughs> every race he's going to is going to be like, oh, it's not one person <laughs> cheered me on. Rubbish this race, not doing uh, But the, yeah, that would be because the, the, the course itself, yes, I enjoy the probably the Bob Graham round route, but as a, an event, the Lakeland 100 was awesome. Oh, that's a, that's a lovely year. Right. Whole of the Lakeland 100 course, your favorite climb. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. It. Well, it's, yeah, uh, the kind of Black Sail Pass. You, if you remember to turn around, and hopefully you're not right at the back of the race, um, but you turn around and you just see this big stream of head torches coming up. It's quite an awesome oh, I sight. I love a stream of head torches. Magic. Mm, magic. That is magic. Right. You've got checkpoints all the way around the Lakeland 100 course, but... They're not your normal checkpoints. You've only got one drink and one snack, and you can't carry any food or drink with you. Okay. So this is all okay. So you've got one snack and one drink for the whole of the course. What's it going to be? Ooh, one snack. One snack. Danny Lyon and Burdock. I love that as a drink. That's oh, awesome. damn! Did you know my mum and dad have just bought a soda stream? Cool. Luckily, do you remember those? Dandelion and burdock. And I do love, oh, we just actually went to Grassmere, the gingerbread shop, so it would be gingerbread, but not one of our what bloody... A combination, that taste combination that would be <laughs> for 24 hours. You'd be up your tits buzzing on dandelion and burdock and gingerbread men. All right, we've been talked a bit about kit, footwear. Okay, you can now run the whole of the Lakeland 100 course, either in your slippers or in flip-flops. <laughs> flip flops my god there's so much water on the course yeah flip flops would you interesting i thought you might say for a bit of comfort imagine the pain in between your oh, toes god, yeah, the flux, i'm thinking about those thongs the flip flops no slippers sorry take it back oh uh, it's too late now you said flip flops <laughs> you're tired to eternity i've actually got two more so i'm going to ask two more because we can do that because it's our podcast right you've got one tip for, for newbies looking at entering Lakeland 100, Lakeland 50, what's your one tip for them? You've got to get out on the course. Yeah, you do it, Gary. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You've got to get out on that course. Get out on that course. That is one of the courses where I'd say, you know, you will you will gain many training hours by knowing the route, knowing what's coming next. Knowing maybe some of the uncomfortable parts, you know, get over to Howtown and run over to... Mardale, places like that. All those little bits and all those little bits where jog run, jog run, yeah. hiking, you know what's over the top, you know how long each climb is. I am I'm here. Because there's so many soft false summits that you think you're there and you're not. So yeah, get out on the course. I know it's not possible for everybody. They don't live all live in the kind of north or northwest. But if, if you, you can, can dedicate all... a weekend, it's money worth spending. If you're gonna spend yeah. the money on training and kit and nutrition and maybe a coach and maybe some lecky poles, then get a weekend away. Stay at youth hostel, super cheap, um, and you can recce the whole Lakeland Fifty in a weekend if you if you uh, can time it with buses and energy wise. Uh, right, last question: You finish the race, you've come home, you're going to sit back and relax. What's your snack of choice, and what are you watching on TV? I love salt and vinegar crisps. 
Is there anything better apart from if you've got cracked lips from dehydration? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, I'm pretty good. I like the squares and I like the the old school fish and chips. I love those. They're good. Oh, good. So good. And what are you watching on TV? We are oh Travel Man. I'm really enjoying Travel Man at the moment. On oh, Netflix, the Richard Iowadi, and I think uh, somebody he basically has 48 hours in a you know foreign city, he takes a friend with him. I really oh, that. that's cool. I like that. All right. Well, that's it, Gary. You your hour in the spotlight is over. Yay. Huge well done. You did so well. Huge well done from me, your biggest Thanks, supporter. Eddie and the rest of the podcast we loved you following your training journey your whole every all the chat i feel quite bereft that it's over we love hearing about it but i'm excited because it's your turn next <laughs> the daily mail articles um <laughs> uh i'm excited now of all that learning and all that what might happen in the next few years as well so big kudos but enjoy your recovery feet up Crack open those salt and vinegar crisps. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody else. I've had such a blast um, seeing our community out there on the trails over the weekend. I was a little bit jealous, Gary. I won't deny it. I was a little bit jealous. We have to come together, Eddie. Both of us are <gasps> the I think we'd have to have security. We'd have to hire Bryn for that whole thing. <laughs> we'd need our little, little own little section. <laughs> our zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks everyone. thanks everyone at the 800 what an event uh hopefully see you there next year can i just say though uh i don't want it to sound <laughs> i don't want it to sound like i'm blaming my quad uh upper not quad sorry my thigh groin area for reason why i didn't get the um sub 24 hour goal who knows how the race would have panned out and i also look at the fact that the quad the, the 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 glute doing what it did was a uh, highlighted something maybe i didn't do in the months before so it's all part of it i don't want to say yeah i was flying pb gonna do it and then i climbed up fusedale and that was it game over um it is what it is, but yeah, I just want to clarify that I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying in the groin, kind of with the nail in the coffin. Blamed your groin for many things in your life, but this the late one hundred. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, <Eddie. laughs> anyway. Oh, you're moving on. on. <clears throat> right, more people, more races coming yeah. up this weekend. Our most fun deal marathon on Sunday. I'm not too sure what happens with these 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 days. I know it used to be like a five, a 10k and a half marathon and a marathon. I'm a bit confused with what this uh, what this is. I did look for other distances and I could only see the marathon, but not one I've done before. No chance. I've checked on SA entries. There is no entries. No chance on the day without one. No chance. Same down south at the Centurion North Downs Way Hundred. No chance of entries. Uh, on the day good luck if you're turning around i think it's going to be hot it's going to be dry at least it's hot and dry it's not slippy because the north sounds where as we know is can be muddy it's rooty it's up and down it's a bit relentless so i think people will be battling the heat so which is often the case at this time of year it's a hard hundred that looks easy on paper you just never get any momentum it's just relentless there's not like south downs where we've got long lovely descents North Downs Way is just like up, up, but it's a bit techy, you know, roots, tree yeah. roots around this path, round, oh, no, round this gate. Oh, it's on, a, and it's often on, it's on the side of a lot of cliff, not cliff, um, sort of chalky embankments. So often yeah. you're running like, it's really uncomfortable running. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've never done it. I've done a lot of races on the North Downs Way, but I've never done the North Downs Way 100. So good luck, good luck, especially if you're running it and listening to this at the same time, the yeah. ultimate combination. We've got some more reviews. We've got heaps. We've got so many. That... I know, yeah, yeah. Do you want to do this one? Go on, then. I love Go doing it with you. We're going to do Alison's Ultra yeah. Inspiration. Yeah, that's what you need on your T-shirt, not whatever that one says now. Absolutely. Yes, put it away. Absolutely love this podcast. 
totally inspired me by the extraordinary efforts of everyone to such an extent that I finally entered an ultra myself. Oh, well done there, Gary, then. That is well done. Ticked it off. She's on it. She's on the road. I'll be listening to you for more inspiration and tips in the run up to the Saints Way in September. Mid mid training block now, I reckon. Thanks for organizing. Oh, look, thanks for organizing all the fantastic guests and for keeping me entertained on long runs and my drives to work. Alison, absolute pleasure. Keep us posted. Pop yeah. over to my Facebook page and yes, let us know how that Saints Way goes in September. Thank you. Thanks very much for the route. If you do like uh, Run to the Hills podcast, who doesn't? Like, share, subscribe, give us a five-star review, whatever you have time for. There's no, you don't have to, but if you do, we love it. We love it, yeah, it's great. Do you want to see my uh, performance? Oh, yeah. in my... I'm surprised you haven't got that on or sort of... Tucking. That is a see. I've only just took my T-shirt. Enormous. Put it next to your head. I mean, it is almost the size of your head. It's definitely the size of my forehead. Head. It is my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> literally literally like a minion. <laughs> it, what is the color why is it yellow and purple is there a reason or is it just i don't know what the if there's any symbolism wrong yellow color black, yellow and purple isn't it it's a heavy you know what i must admit when i saw the uh they tease you with the lakeland hundred there's bits kind of information gets teased out i thought you know yellow and purple mm. not my favorite colors but um Looks good yeah. on you, Gary. Yeah, and uh, Lisa rocks a nice purple short too. So when we're out together, I could have my little hundred top on, and uh, Lisa has oh, a purple short. And your medal. I thought and you your medal. Have a medal on. That is a good medal. Though. It's a pity there's not more uses to a medal once you get it, isn't it? Because they're lovely. You get them. They do a bottle opener, don't they? That's quite common on a medal these days. Yeah, I mean, then what do you do with them? I mean, I wear mine just down to Cafour or the school room. How do you? Coaster, yeah. It's great. Ring's got a lovely one actually from Ring of Fire a few years ago, and it's made out of the local slate. I think it oh. is. Oh, it's dead nice that. Dead nice that. Talking about slates, that's the five hundred. That's the five Lakeland hundreds. Is, is it? So you've done two now, three two, more. Two, yeah. So I've got to keep chipping, <laughs> chipping, <laughs> chipping away, chip, chip, chip. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the ultimate. You know, if, if all else, any goals as far as time and positions are go. You've got to complete it because then you've got to go again. You've just got to stay in the race. you just got to stay in the race. Keep staying in and then one day when you're a V75, they'll <laughs> crack it. Just, everyone just gets faster. I've played that game I mean, and it never... Middle-aged men, all your free time. God damn it, yeah. <laughs> God damn it, we just get slower <laughs> as middle-aged women. You're <laughs> faster. <laughs> Right, enough. Next week, we move on. We move on. They won't just be me and Gary. We'll have more guests. We'll have some exciting news next week. Yes. I don't know. We'll just give a teaser. I think it is exciting. Uh, heading the podcast in new directions. Um, but it'll still Don't panic, though. That sounds like something really major is going to happen. <laughs> Well, I just thought I'd make it so our life, our dull, meaningless existence. Tune in next week. <laughs> a bit more exciting than recording from our garages. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for all the support for Gary. It meant a lot to me. I learned to Gary. I loved her. Uh, I, I loved did feel love. the love. I really, really appreciated it. Felt the love this episode. That's what we should call it. Feel the love. Feel the love. But that was episode 101. Thanks for listening, everybody. And thank you again to Chica Charge for continuing to support the show. Sending bars to guests, competition winners, keeping Eddie and I fueled in our adventures and generally being an all-round super support to everyone out on the trails. My name's Gary Thwaites. Yeah, it is. I'm Eddie Sutton. Let's run to the hills. Mm-hmm.